Let's go. Shantanu Naidu, Mr. Ratan Tata's millennial friend. Shantanu, describe Mr. Ratan Tata in one word. Kind. One trait that you have displayed, perhaps, to have had this journey at the Tata Group. Curiosity. Talking about inspirational entrepreneurs, name some for us. Bhavish Agarwal is definitely uh, one of them. One word for 70 hours working week comment. Personal choice. As a millennial, one word for social media. That's a tough one. <laughs> Silence. That's what I'm getting. One word for AI. Responsibility. I guess. The idolization yeah. culture is what is the issue. So. Ah. We always want someone else to give us the answer that mm. how many hours should I be working, and then someone who you look up to says these many hours you should be working, mm. and then you want to follow just that. The person joining us next, his designation is that of a general manager at Tata, but his identity largely is that of a social entrepreneur. He is an author. He is also a singer. But the one thing you know him most for is being Mr. Tata's millennial friend. Shantanu, thank you so much for joining us and talking to us. Is that a fair introduction to what your life is? Heavier than what I would like, but uh, <laughs> fair. Okay. Nice to be here, sir. You know, this is, we're starting at uh, one of its kind animal hospitals in the country. We've done a full tour of the place. We've seen the kind of mechanisms that have been brought in. What really stuck with me was not just the machinery, first of its kind setup that has been made, but also just to see how happy uh, doctors were <laughs> just working around the area. Go back to the time when the first time the idea of an animal hospital actually came about. Right. Uh, I think it's a pretty well-known story when Mr. Data's own dog, Tito, was suffering from a particular medical issue, which didn't really have a solution that was present in India. So there was a particular freeze the joint kind of solution, which was a bit medically advanced for our veterinary care system. And he had to fly him out of the country. So at that point, even though he fixed that situation, it stuck with him that why shouldn't our country have the kind of resources to deal with situations as complex as these, especially with the growing pet population. That's when the idea germinated. That was quite a long time ago. Um, but over the years, it has taken shape, form, and here we are at the hospital today. Shandra, I'm quite intrigued by the different projects that you've been picking up, working with the Tata Trust. It is about, you know, older people, lonely people at one hand. It is about strays and dogs the other. We will do with senior citizens. So you have to come and make a festival with us. Because senior citizens, we are involved in this hospital. At a time, you're, you're what, 30, right? Uh, yeah, 31. You're 31. You're almost my age and a lot of, and this is the age of a lot of entrepreneurs and startup owners as well. At a time when you have an entire generation which is looking at valuation, startups and, you know, doing path-breaking stuff at AI, what keeps bringing you back to sort of this sort of social entrepreneurship or to do more for others than actually your bank balance? I think entrepreneurship is the pursuit of picking a problem and solving it. Picking a really tough problem and solving it and all the profitable startups and kudos to them for having done what they have. They have picked a problem, they've solved it successfully and made it profitable, which is a very successful enterprise, which is something I really respect and appreciate. For me personally, picking that particular problem to solve has always been about a problem that resonates with me on an emotional level, on a value system level. Hmm. That is the only incentive that allows me to try and solve it. Hmm. So I might identify a profitable problem, but it just doesn't excite me as much to chase it hmm. as a problem that has visible positive impact on communities. Hmm. So the valuations, entrepreneurship, and the uh, breakneck ecosystem that we have hmm. should exist and should thrive. And it is an important and integral part of our Indian youth, hmm. our economy in the future. Hmm. But as far as social entrepreneurship is concerned, that just it's just a personal thing that I just need to pick a problem where I can see communities getting impacted positively. I see. 
I have an observation to make. You are 30, in your 30s. Yeah. You sound like uh, you are 45. Your vision is that of a much older person. Where is all this coming from, Shantanu? I really don't know. If you literally mean sound, I have a cold today. So, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I couldn't answer that myself. I think I have been privileged enough to be put into situations where I'm exposed to people who are quite mm. senior in the industry, mm. which allows me to perhaps absorb as much as I can. Mm. Uh, so I think I have an advantage in that sense. Hmm. So it's really not me as much as the situations I've been put in and I'm quite lucky for that. I feel like if the world were a binary or a spectrum right now, you would have Elon Musk on one end and Mr. Ratan Tata on the other. A lot of young people today, millennials, Gen Z, would sort of gravitate towards Elon Musk's way of life and way of uh, work. What sort of brings in a person like you to understand more the values and sort of what Mr. Ratan Tata actually stands for? I think it's more generational than just Mr. Tata. Uh, this has been five generations of my family. I'm the fifth generation who is working for the Tatas. Mm. All the generations before me had regular general roles like an engineer here or a maintenance engineer there, starting from my great-grandfather. So to see all the values planted in an individual won't be the right way to look at it, especially when it comes to the Tata group. I think it has been a legacy that's been handed down so much. And my family having been exposed to that over generations has sort of allowed us to appreciate and respect mm -hmm. that more mm -hmm. or have that as a central value system for our family as well. So I think that overlapping legacy mm -hmm. where we have always respected and mm -hmm. revered the Tatas mm -hmm. through not one or two but five generations puts it in a different perspective for us of mm. who we would like to... Are you aware a lot of young people do not think like this? I am not aware. <laughs> You're surrounding yourself with just those like you then? I don't know. I'm Honestly, I'm not taking any conscious efforts to be... Like I said, I'm not taking conscious efforts to be put in the situation. That's that interesting. I, hmm. I have just been quite blessed and privileged to be put in one situation after the another. Hmm where the value system that I have been brought up with, mm. thanks to my mom, has sort of been the value system where I have gravitated naturally in this situation. So like, I couldn't the, take the credit for that. The reason I ask you this is because a lot of younger folks today would give an arm and a leg to be in the position you are in, to be at uh, in midst of this vast pool of not just resources, but also knowledge and wisdom. If you were to talk to me about a couple of traits that led you to this position, which ones would those be? I think if it all started with the story of motopoles, it was a, one was technical and one was emotional. The technical one, which I love to tell people, is that a lot of people say, you know, you ended up where you ended up because you were in the right place at the right time. Hmm. And I say, yes, absolutely. That's the absolute correct answer, which means that you just need to put yourself in as many situations as possible for you to strike the right one. So I was always out there doing certain things and some of them were quite hmm. embarrassing to look back on, honestly. Hmm. But you never know which one is going to be the one that sort of opens that door, hmm. which is why you need to plant yourself in as many situations as possible. Hmm. And the second emotional one was when you are doing something with complete heart, hmm. There is a way where people who also believe in that same cause to gravitate mm. towards your overlap paths with you at some point, mm. somewhere, somehow. Mm. So I think a combination of those and motorboards led me to where I am. But mm. I believe that there is a sea and plethora of young individuals out there who mm. would fulfill the position I am in just as well, if not better. Mm. So it's not really a singular thing. It's just being at the right place at the right time that led me here and I'm appreciative of it. And I would like to use that privilege for as many positive things as possible. I'm trying my best. But it really isn't. I'm not the only one. I'm sure so many other people would have been just as much better if not the best. Yeah. Given my circumstances.
you make it sound like it's super easy for anybody to do something like this. But considering what you have achieved at just the age of 31, multiple sort of programs and initiatives that are running, the lives that you're touching, it has to be one where you look back and see your choices would have been different had it not come the Tata way as well. So what is your message then to those uh, young millennials at the moment who perhaps today, uh, you know, live in a world where there is no job security, there is no profession that is so-called safe or future proof to them who are looking at careers, looking at jobs. What is your advice? I think as tough as that sounds, and I'm sure it's a bit of a struggle because I work with a lot of uh, Gen Z, especially in the senior care startup that we have. The mm. age spectrum is between 18 to 24. So I'm exposed to them constantly. I think one of the great things that I have taken advantage of in this particular tough situation is to really choose something that gives you fulfillment. And I have seen these young folks give up on financially better off possibilities just to choose something that gives them something that aligns with their personal principles and personal mm. values. Mm. Something that I would not have had the courage to do when I was starting off as a young engineer, for example. I would... I went into engineering because it was safe, like you described it. A lot of my colleagues did. A lot of millennials did choose professions based on what is financially safe and what's going to create a foundation where we are not out on the street. Mm. But this generation has the courage to choose something that aligns with their personal values, that mm. gives them a sense of fulfillment. And at the end of the day, they want to see what was it, what was the impact, impact that was created because of what I did at my job today. Mm. And if the answer to that is not clear or is murky or is... A corporate wishy-washy answer then they're just choosing to lean or not pursue that stream and I think I think that's brilliant because that's how change makers get made so I don't think I need to give them any advice I think they are on the right track in fact it's the other way around and there's more to learn from them mm. uh, for me today all right talking about corporate wishy-washy let's touch upon another subject which is very corporate nature which is work-life balance and I wanted to understand your take on that we again, like I said, binary is all around us. We have Narayan Murthy, 72 hour work in a week compared to one that was mentioned in your book as well. You said that one of the times that you were really held up by Mr. Tata was for actually making calls late in the night. Right. So where does, where does that fit in? I think there cannot be a singular answer because company cultures, entrepreneurship cultures, individual cultures dictate the life of an employee mm. so for someone to say you should work for these many hours you shouldn't and then applying as a blanket rule across companies that have different cultures mm. would not be right so at the risk of sounding diplomatic it really comes down to each company and its own culture mm. if you asked my personal preference of course there should be a balance but if you asked if i myself have balance no i personally like to fill in my life with a lot of things at mm. the same time i do not like to transfer that on to juniors or people younger to me or in the startup because I want to give them the right idea of knowing that a job is what you do and it's not who you are. Mm. It's not your whole identity. It should not be your whole self-worth. Mm. It's a profession at the end of the day. Yes, it puts bread and butter on the table and yes, it can be something you're passionate about, in which case all these barriers won't be visible to you at which, in which case, just please go ahead at full speed. But to assume that everybody else will operate under that same mm. passion is not something mm. we should take for granted. So, mm. And uh, to say that, you know, what you do is your only value okay. is sort of reducing the value of human beings a little bit. Mm. There's so much more and they should be allowed to be more outside of that mm. profession be more than just your job. I'm also noticing uh, a slight difference uh, in in your answers compared to some of your earlier interviews. Right. As age is catching up, diplomacy is as well? No, as age is catching up, I would say you learn new perspectives, <laughs> you understand where people are coming from. Hmm. Something that I actually love to do because you think you have it figured out, but hmm. you really don't. And you hmm. then meet two more people who have seen life more than you have. And then hmm understand so while I maintain my previous answer of mm -hmm. how work-life balance and everything should be I also understand that some people actually like 
doing what has been the polar opposite. Mm. And if they like doing it, and if it's not hindering anybody else, mm. that's absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. Freedom and choices for all. I think that's where we are getting. Yes, this. and the idolization yeah. culture is what is the issue. So ah. we always want someone else to give us the answer that mm. how many hours should I be working? And then someone who you look up to says, these many hours you should be working. Mm. And then you want to follow just that. Mm. But it really doesn't have to be idolization to a T. Mm. We have so many amazing entrepreneurs and so many amazing leaders in the country who you should be inspired by and you mm. should take the relevant inspiration from them. Mm. But to sort of clone your entire personality after a particular person you idolize will then end up in feeling this internal conflict of, is this the right thing? Should I be working with many hours? Mm. I want to be passionate, but I don't feel comfortable stretching myself that way. Yeah. So, Talking about inspirational entrepreneurs, name some for us. I think uh, Bhavish Agarwal is definitely uh, one of some... Uh, the way he has built um, Ola and honestly the entire I think for me it's the entire entrepreneurial ecosystem and how it's sort of thriving off of each other is what mm. is the inspiration to me rather than mm. an individual uh, mm. so I have because I have been exposed to the startup portfolio working where I am it has been quite exciting to see how each one of them has chosen to grow their companies and none of them are the same mm, mm. which is what makes it exciting because they just have a vision they have a particular way they think they're going to reach there and they yeah. towards this yeah it's amazing your eyes are lighting up at the thought of Bhavesh and everything that he's doing he's clearly not for work-life balance know, <laughs> he's a work colleague and he is, wants everybody to go down that road which yes. emphasizes my point that there are certain things that you idolize about some people and mm. take inspiration from and certain things you don't agree on it mm. should be allowed. Mm. Today, if you want to be inspired by someone, it seems to be the norm that you have to be inspired by every single thing that yeah. you do. Yeah. But no, I agree with some of these things and I don't agree with others. Yeah. But How are disagreements happening when you are taking decisions along with Mr. Tata? How is that generational gap and how do negotiations and disagreements happen there? I don't think there are disagreements as such. Uh, I continue to work for him. <laughs> And he is a great boss. He's a great colleague to everyone. He has been a colleague to when I have seen him. And he has this way of allowing people to present their perspectives hmm. in full hmm. before everyone makes a conscious joint decision. Something that is so respectable and so statesman-like hmm. and so refined in terms hmm. of business that uh, authority and hierarchy doesn't as much come through. Everyone's allowed to, everyone who sees him is allowed to present that perspective in a respectable mm. manner. But there have been moments when you've been frustrated at the pace of work. Not really. Or, or frustrated with decision making. Generally what people this age feel. Not really, not really. Because every day through sheer observation, mm. there's so much to learn. Mm. That you're just in that mindset instead of anything else. Every I day see. Is different. Can you uh, mark for us or sort of recount one of those points when in your such a long journey 2009 you joined uh, no I joined I've known him since 2015 hmm. I joined in 2018 yeah okay so since that time one <clears throat> moment that really stood out for you which you feel in a way defines what uh, this the most respected entrepreneur in the world if not the country is really standing for I think it's empathy hmm and I would like to pinpoint a particular moment, but I cannot because someone who's empathetic practices it on a daily basis in every small touch and communication and any sort of interaction with any individual who can who can or can't do anything for you in return. Mm. And you see that over a span of time and that's how you realize that it is in fact an integrated value that someone can actually incorporate in their own lives and not a singular moment which was like a mm. voila this is this changed me mm. you know I think you can be inspired by a particular value if you see it repeated day after day after day this whole group has done it for 150 years and he himself continues to do that so just that level of empathy and sensitivity and so it's the Tata way of life not just the Tata way of doing business absolutely 
All right, enough of diplomatic answers over there. I'm expecting some fast-paced action now, Chantu. No, Things not. that your generation is in yours. Describe Mr. Ratan Tata in one word. Kind. At 30, Shantanu is a social entrepreneur. He's a, used to be a social media influencer. He's a deputy manager. What do you plan to do when you are 86? Have a big farm with sheep and dogs on it. <laughs> okay. If you had, could go back in time and do one thing differently in your journey so far, which one would that be? Probably spend more time with my first dog. I see. Interesting. Okay, as a millennial, one word for social media. That's a tough one. <laughs> Silence! That's what I'm getting. That's There's so the many aspects that are evolving every day. Uh, one word. Responsibility. Ah, okay. Social media does more harm than good, true or false? True. How many hours do you spend on social media? Too many. On work-life balance then, one word for 70 hours working week comment. Personal choice. Okay. What's your take on dating and marriage then? Any pearls of wisdom there coming from the eternal bachelor himself? Still learning. <laughs> Two attributes in an older generation that millennials miss today. A set of principles. Your two attributes in dogs that humans don't have. Oh, that is less and less. Living in the moment. Okay, one word for AI. Responsibility again. One trait that you have displayed perhaps to have had this journey at the data group. Curiosity. And finally, the most difficult question of all, dogs or cats. No, I can't answer that possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew, thanks so much. Thank you.